Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending today's event for Intentional Hiking with Tyler Ray from the American Hiking Society, Courtney Lyons Garcia, and Cristobal Slobogen from Partnership for the National Trail System. We are here today to talk about through hiking and trail nonprofits, how trail improvements happen, and how to get involved. I am your host, Renee Shira Patrick. And I've been hiking long trails for over 20 years now and created this event series for myself and others like you in the hiking community to develop a culture of thoughtfulness and intention about the time we spend outside on trails. Each time you attend an intentional hiking event will be focused on a different theme. Those themes include do, learn, create, be, and regional focus. So today we have a learn event focused on learning more about how trail nonprofits work with our elected officials and what your role can be if you want your voice heard on important matters involving policy and lawmaking. I am bringing you all together through these events because I believe we are a powerful force for change. Beyond developing an intentional hiking practice in our own personal trail experiences, I think the impacts and influence of our individual actions can help influence the world around us. If all of us cultivate our personal relationship with trails and the environment by using our own individual passions, skills, and interests, maybe connections will be made at these events and beyond that will lead to new businesses, organizations, and new partnerships or collaborations. So in effect, I started this event series to convene the hiking community and empower action. So I do have a fair amount of personal experience advocating for trails, and that has been recently relative development for me. Um, recent because I've been hiking long trails for 22 years now, and have just started paying attention and participating in advocacy efforts for about the last eight years. And that probably only happened because it was my job. So eight years ago, after I finished hiking the Triple Crown Trails with a through hike of the Continental Divide Trail, I returned home to Bend, Oregon and was hired by a conservation organization, the Oregon Natural Desert Association, or ONDA, to help establish the 750 mile Oregon Desert Trail through Southeastern Oregon. Onda believed that they could help attract more advocates of a healthy high desert sagebrush step ecosystem by helping people experience this landscape and develop their personal connection to it. So the Oregon Desert Trail was conceived to connect the places the organization had been successful in protecting, like the Oregon Badlands Wilderness and the Steens Mountain Wilderness, with other areas they were actively working to protect like the Owyhee Canyon lands and important sage grouse and pronghorn habitat all throughout the region. It was my job to develop the resources for hikers on the Oregon Desert Trail, establish relationships with our trail towns, agency partners, and stakeholders throughout the region, but also help activate Oregon Desert Trail hikers in some of the advocacy actions championed by ONDA. I learned a ton over the years of this work and came to see conservation, environmental and advocacy part, the part of the Oregon Desert Trail to be one of the most unique things about hiking this route. The route was a path to a greater understanding of land designations, protections, working with our elected officials and more. I'll be honest though, sometimes it still feels like what us as organizations and advocates do to interface with Congress and decision makers on the topics that are important to us is still somewhat of a black box, that the efforts and the work that goes into trying to forward our priorities can be met with unintended consequences. And the policies or legislation that comes out the other side can be pretty different than what we asked for. So that's why I'm excited to have these three advocacy powerhouses on intentional hiking today, so they can help us understand how this process works what are the impactful ways to have our voices heard and learn more about how their organizations champion trail priorities with our elected officials. Also, today's presentation is timely as it takes place right before the annual Hike the Hill event, which you'll be hearing more about. 
For the 27th year, this joint effort between these two organizations here today bring together the trails community to advance shared priorities with congressional and federal agency leaders, including trails funding, public lands management, and conservation. So I know you're gonna be hearing a lot more about this. So with that, I wanna welcome my guests to our virtual stage. First, we have Tyler Ray, who is the Senior Director for Programs and Advocacy at American Hiking Society. Tyler is joined by Courtney Lyons Garcia, the Executive Director for Partnership for the National Trail System, and then Cristobal Slobogin, uh, who is the Development Manager for Partnership for the National Trail System. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it on to Tyler to get us started and learning more about all of this. Great, thanks so much, Renee. I'll share my screen with everyone. Um, Awesome. So um, as Renee said, my name is Tyler Ray. I'm the senior director um, at American Hiking Society. Um, we are an organization whose mission is to empower all to enjoy, share, and preserve the hiking experience. Um, we've been around for over 45 years and we consider ourselves the only national recreation-based nonprofit organization that's dedicated to hiking. Um, we work really to achieve our mission in two kind of key ways. Um, the first one through policy and advocacy, where we work with Congress and federal agencies to shape public policy and legislation that affects hiking, public land, and outdoor access and equity. Um, and really our efforts here um, help to ensure that funding for hiking trails, the preservation of natural areas, and access to the hiking experiences for all communities um, can be achieved. Um, we do this kind of at a national advocacy approach um, including through Hike the Hill in partnership with the national, with the partnership for the national trail system that you'll hear more about later. Um, and we really join um, trail organizations from across the country to collectively advance trail priorities. Um, for example, we are part of the effort to pass the Great American Outdoors Act a few years ago, um, which provided dedicated funding to conserve natural places, parks and recreation areas through the Land and Water Conservation Fund, as well as addressing deferred maintenance needs um, across our public lands and on our trails. Um, the kind of other way that we achieve our mission is through volunteerism and stewardship. Um, we organize and coordinate volunteer vacations, alternative breaks, and National Trails Day, um, all nationally recognized programs that help keep our trails open and maintained and provide first-time experiences to volunteers um, that bring together communities at kind of local trail events across the country. Um, all throughout this work, um, AHS as an organization has been on a mission to prioritize justice, equity, diversity, inclusion in all assets, um, facets of our organization and our work, and really kind of over the last seven or eight years have really taken steps to make it central to our mission and our work, um, kind of with the belief that strength of the hiking community is dependent upon every hiker feeling seen, heard, and valued and really believing that everyone, not just kind of uh, the privileged few should be able to access the benefits of hiking that we all receive, um, including mental health benefits and healing, fostering connections with nature and really building community. And so um, we kind of have approached this work kind of with the recognition that we're not gonna be perfect in it um, and that we're gonna kind of make mistakes and grow, um, but we'll be better as an organization overall kind of um, when we make this a part of our, a key part of our mission. Um, Here's just kind of a highlight of kind of the different um, programs that we lead. Um, you'll see National Trails Day, which is the first Saturday of every June. So this year it's June 1st. Um, Hike the Hill, which you'll hear a lot more about is coming up with our issue briefings starting in a few weeks. We also have a program that engages kind of up and coming youth in the outdoors through our Next Gen Trail Leaders Program, um, which provides support on both advocacy, stewardship, communications, and kind of professional development um, to five individuals each year um, to help them kind of grow in the outdoor recreation space. Um, and then also our volunteer vacation trips, um, which may be interest um, to many, many of you on the call. Um, these are both week-long and weekend-long trips um, across the country um, that allow kind of individuals to um, volunteer and give back to the trails you love, um, including many national scenic trails um, that many of you have probably hiked. 
um, as well as trails across public lands, um, whether it's the Forest Service, the Bureau of Land Management, Fish and Wildlife Service, or state parks across the country. Um, we actually just opened registration for our 2024 trips um, and have many locations um, for that. So if you're interested in that, um, there's information on our website as, as well as kind of a way to both give back um, and enjoy kind of these trails across the country. So now I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of delving into what advocacy is and kind of how you as an individual or working with a trail organization can kind of engage in advocacy. Um, I'd first kind of start with advocacy really isn't a kind of there's not one form of advocacy. It, it really takes many forms and kind of at the simplest terms, it's really just kind of making the case for kind of the cause or mission in a way that'll change public policy. Um, and whether that's public policy at the federal level, the state level or the local level, um, it, it, it's kind of all of those areas. Um, advocacy can be a number of things, whether it's kind of education and public research, um, engaging with voters, voting in an election are all forms of advocacy. Um, and these activities are all really especially important when you want to make sure that kind of issues that are maybe not in the spotlight um, get representation. So the different types of advocacy that we really have that I'll be focusing on um, is uh, includes direct advocacy, um, which is kind of engaging directly with um, elected officials, um, at any level of government, um, hike the hills, an example of direct advocacy, um, grassroots advocacy, which is really kind of engaging at the local level, um, engaging with your community, your friends and your family, or kind of those who follow you on social media to take action. Um, advocacy can take the form also of in-person activities, um, whether it's participating in a national trails day event or a local town hall or a public forum that your local elected official is holding, and it can also take the form of communications, um, writing a letter to the editor, or posting something on a blog or social media, um, or some other form um, that really kind of seeks to educate and change someone's mind about an issue. Um, that could be a local hiking trail that may be facing closure because of funding or because it's not maintained well enough, and so you write a letter to the editor encouraging the local agency that oversees that trail, whether it's the Parks and Rec Department or um, the Facilities Department of, of your city or county to um, provide funding or staffing for that trail. Um, and so really kind of one of the key ways to really be an effective advocate um, is to connect kind of who you are and your personal story um, with the issues that you care about. So many of you have hiked long distance trails and that's an important part about your of your in your advocacy is sharing why you did that, what experience you got from it, what you want others to experience and sharing that with those who are in positions of power to get them to support what you're asking them to do. Um, really making the audience connect with an issue kind of through your experiences is one of the effective ways to kind of be an advocate. Um, so one of the kind of prompts I wanted to um, just share and, and feel free to share through the um, in the in the chat is kind of have you seen and engaged in any kind of advocacy activities in the past? Um, have you kind of taken a call to action or have you attended a town hall and kind of if so, like, why did you do that or what resonated with you? Um, so just feel free to kind of share that in the chat. And then I'll go into a little more about kind of the different tactics that we can use um, when kind of advocating um, specifically with um, elected leaders. And this is elected leaders, not just kind of in Congress, but your local city council members, your local parks and rec commissioners, and kind of anyone that may have kind of oversight and authority um, over kind of the trails that you use or kind of the public land and public resources that you use. And so one of like the key things in engaging with kind of elected leaders at any level is really kind of to form relationships, make them be aware that kind of you and kind of your constituency are out and active in kind of the community or the area that they represent. Um, reaching out to their offices on websites or kind of emails um, and be and introducing yourself to kind of the staff that works um, in their both district offices and kind of their national DC offices is really important. Um, 
the many offices all have district kind of constituent engagements. So they want to hear from you. It's just a matter of you reaching out to them. Um, one of the ways to reach out is you can attend in district events. Um, many host town halls and, and things like that. Um, but also um, inviting them to events that you are hosting is also a great way to engage. And I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, another way to engage with kind of your elected officials is really by writing and submitting letters and communications to them. Um, a lot of kind of input from the public, as Renee mentioned, is kind of what shaped congressional action. And in order to kind of get from an idea to kind of the end product, you really need to be involved in that process so that kind of what you're asking for is what is kind of the end result is. Um, all congressional offices and many local offices um, really benefit directly from hearing directly from hikers like you. Um, and like I mentioned, kind of sharing your personal story about who you are, why a specific issue is important to you, how this issue will impact kind of the trail you love to hike or the district that the representative represents or the state is all important to share. And then also sharing kind of why you support or oppose a certain issue. Um, if there is a consideration to change a hiking trail to a multi-use trail and you have concerns that it is going to potentially push hikers off the trail. That's an important thing to kind of write a letter about or submit testimony on or talk to your local um, decision makers about. Um, and kind of how you go about submitting those is really kind of starting online and looking at their websites and the pages is there's typically information there about how to contact them and what the process is for kind of submitting something. Um, that's really kind of always the best place to start. Um, you can also contact um, your member of Congress um, or your local elected officials and really ask them who the best contact will be um, and uh, like either a phone number or an e email address for them um, that will help you get in contact with kind of the person that you need to make sure um, is like covering this issue. Typically that's a staff member um, and sometimes um, the representative themselves or like the local elected official themselves, depending on the issue. Another really great way to engage, especially kind of at the local level, is inviting your members of Congress, congressional staff, local city council members, local elected officials to go on the trail with you. You as a hiker, especially a long distance hiker, probably have a lot of experience and knowledge that you are able to share like while you're out on a hike that a staffer in a local office may not have, but may be very interested in learning about. And while you're on the trail with them, it provides them an opportunity to really see the on the ground benefits that kind of hiking and these trails provide and allows you an opportunity to talk to them about the issues that you really care about. Um, you can really raise awareness for the trail or the trail organization you're working with um, and really allow them to feel invested in kind of wanting to support these places um, when it comes time to funding them or to um, applying for a grant and asking them for a letter and, and all these things. Um, some really great ways to kind of schedule trail visits is either by inviting them to a big organized event that you're going to be attending or be part of. That can be a National Trails Day event, a ribbon cutting if there's a new portion of a trail that has been opened or really like, like maintained. Um, finding out when your member of Congress especially will be back in town for, re for recess, um, when they're looking for kind of in-district events to do, um, or ways that they can kind of reach out to a large number of participants um, and talk to them. They're always looking for opportunities um, to do that. Um, all most offices have a position that's called a scheduler, who is the one that maintains kind of the elected officials um, event list. And so when you're reaching out um, and kind of contacting them, um, asking for the scheduler and um, is, is a great way to kind of um, invite members. Um, volunteer days are also a really great opportunity to invite either an elected official or kind of their staff um, to really see kind of what it takes to um, maintain trails and maintain public access to trails for hikers to use. Um, that's also a really great opportunity for them to get their hands dirty and kind of experience um, and value kind of what you are doing. 
And the last few ones I just wanted to highlight is just the importance of communications. Um, it may seem like sometimes when you send an email or take a call to action, like nothing really like happens from there. But I can assure you that when you do, all of those are collected and recorded. And it's kind of the collective voice coming together is what makes a difference. Um, members of Congress especially track communications um, that happen, especially from constituents. Um, and kind of look at those when making kind of decisions, especially on issues that are less um, like hot button in the news, but really important. And a lot of trails and hiking issues fall into that category. Um, and so it gets their attention. Um, really effective ways to do this are writing a letter to your local paper um, that's included in, in the section that they track closely, um, sharing something on social media, writing a blog. Um, a lot of organizations, especially trail organizations, um, have blogs and are always looking for content to kind of share. And so if you're willing to write something and serve as kind of a guest author, um, that'll both kind of give you help get your voice out there, give the organization some content, and kind of be a more elevated platform um, to kind of um, share your voice. Um, if you work with an organization, asking them to kind of release, issue a press release um, about something, whether it's recognizing a local effect, elected official's action or their inaction um, is really a good way to um, kind of engage from a communication standpoint. Um, and then just the last two is, is just, um, a lot of organizations have really easy to use tools that allow you to directly email and contact your elected official on a variety of issues. And so I think those um, play an important role and just looking for opportunities to do that are really helpful. Um, and then kind of as you see information and stories and articles that are communications related, sharing those with your local elected officials um, is a great way to kind of reach out to them and remind them that you're there and that you're kind of an interested constituent, um, which really allows you to both kind of form the relationship and with those elected officials and provide a reason to kind of reach out to them. So those are just some kind of basic um, ways to kind of engage in advocacy from the outset. Uh, I definitely didn't cover everything um, and all the different tactics, but um, hopefully this kind of gives you a good sense of um, where to start. And I'd say kind of my biggest recommendation is kind of look for a local organization that is involved and interested in what you are doing and kind of what you're interested in and get engaged with them. And they're likely to have a lot of resources to allow you to kind of continue your advocacy work. Um, Hike the Hill is a great way to kind of do that as well. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it on to um, Courtney and Cristobal. Um, to delve a little more deeper into that and also share about Hike the Hill. So, thanks. Thank you, Tyler. We uh, appreciate uh, the partnership that we have with you guys. Uh, and we have been, like you said, we've been partnering uh, almost 30 years on Hike the Hill. Uh, so we're really excited to be moving forward with that uh, this coming February. So uh, I'm Courtney Lyons Garcia. You can advance the slide. Uh, I am the executive director of the Partnership for the National Trail System. I've been in public lands and trail development for 25 years. Uh, so our organization is a 501c3 uh, that was established to bring all of the support systems for our National Scenic and Historic Trails together. There are 32 right now. Uh, most of you know, you know, the Appalachian Trail uh, or the Continental Divide, but there are many, many, many trails across this country, both scenic and historic, that you can get out there and enjoy, including the Ice Age or the El Camino Real de los Tejas, which runs through uh, my town in Texas. Uh, and so we have this network of affiliated groups that come together for advocacy, for policy issues, and trainings as well. Uh, so we advocate uh, for trail protection. We advocate for creating inclusive pathways so that trails can be accessible for all 
Uh, we have an internship and trail apprentice programs to connect youth with nature. And we uh, are going to be approaching the 60th anniversary of the National Scenic and Historic Trails Act uh, coming up soon. And so we are going to be working on getting the word out about uh, the 60th anniversary. Uh, you know, so we have, like we said, more than 30 uh, National Scenic and Historic Trails across the country. Um, I was uh, privileged to be in Hawaii uh, last month. I got to do the trail out there. Uh, but, you know, we they, they are large and small uh, and they uh, cover everything that you can think of about our country. Uh, so don't forget that you, you know, if you don't have the time to dedicate a few months <laughs> to doing the Appalachian Trail, there are lots of really cool trails all across our country that you can get on and get involved in. So what do we do, right? So we uh, convene committees uh, on a regular basis with our member groups to find out what uh, the issues are that are uh, facing our various trails. Maybe it's a management issue with the Forest Service on the West Coast. Uh, maybe it's uh, encroachment on a trail in Florida. You know, so we collaborate and get information from them so that we can pull together uh, a cohesive uh, strategy that will work with Congress to address those specific topics, right? Uh, so we work really closely with our federal agency partners and for the national trails, that would be the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. Forest Service, and the Park Service. Uh, and so we provide training, we provide funding, um, we educate the public. And then, of course, we have our annual advocacy event that we do in partnership with American Hiking. And so just um, as a background information, uh, you know, I'm in addition to working um, as uh, the executive director for the partnership for the National Trail System, I also work in my own community on trails efforts. Uh, so I'm a board member for Comal Trails Alliance. I live in New Braunfels, Texas, which is right in the heart of Texas in between uh, Austin and San Antonio. I am in the fastest growing county in the nation. Uh, so the the we we went from uh, seventy one thousand people five years ago to one hundred and eighty five thousand uh, today. So we grew one hundred thousand people in our town, uh, in our city limits, in five years. So our growth uh, in Central Texas is explosive and unbelievable. Uh, so you know, with Kamal Trails Alliance, we work with the city and the county to build and maintain trails in our local community. And then I'm also working with Great Springs Project, which is a hundred mile trail that stretches from the Alamo in San Antonio to the Capitol in Austin. And we have about 30% of the trail on the ground. Uh, and we go through uh, four main counties and the trail connects the four major springs of Central Texas. Texas. Uh, these springs have been in use by humans for uh, tens of thousands of years. We have cave paintings that have the springs in them, and they are part of two local tribes' uh, creation myths. Uh, so these are really ancient uh, and important springs that have been uh, important uh, to the human story since humans started walking around down here in Texas. Uh, and so we're working to connect those through a hike and bike trail uh, that's about 100 miles. And so, uh, you know, it, this kind of work uh, is work that you all are doing across the country and getting involved with across the country. Uh, and putting together a 100 mile trail like this as Tyler said, it calls for work on the state, local, and national level, all concurrent, all at the same time, all coordinated. So it's a huge challenge, uh, but that's kind of some of the work that I'm doing um, in my own neighborhood, in addition to my job with the partnership. So we, like I said, we work uh, across these federal agencies uh, to identify ways that we can make volunteering easier on the trails, to identify ways that we can um, move maybe a section of the trail to make it a prettier or better or not going through a place that we don't want it to. 
Uh, we work on acquisition uh, and easements. Uh, so we work on the minutia and then we work on the big picture things like Tyler talked about, like funding for our trail system or funding uh, for the land and water conservation fund. So we can do those acquisitions. So we look um, at the macro and the micro. I'll jump in. I'm gonna introduce myself. Um, let me just put down that. Uh, my name is Cristobal Slobogin. Um, I'm the development manager for the partnership for the National Trail System. Um, I've been doing fundraising and trail management uh, for over 15 years now. Um, I've worked with local, state, and federal agencies to bring improvements to trails in over a dozen states, East Coast, West Coast. Um, as a seasoned long distance backpacker, um, done uh, long stretches of the PCT, AT, um, all of the Tahoe Rim Trail many times, um, and a former backcountry guide, um, I bring a lot of uh, passion to my work. And I often uh, take that passion um, on a daily basis and utilize it in creating new initiatives, improvements and projects, as well as fundraising um, for our national trail system. Um, this is a couple examples of some of the passion that I do bring and, and that actually come uh, enables me to come up with some ideas for trail improvement, getting into the shoes of a hiker, which I am when I'm not working. Um, so the first picture is backpacking the Florida Trail, um, which is one of our national scenic trails. Um, that's actually the pup, not me. <laughs> um, second picture is uh, canyoneering in Waterhole Canyon in near Page, Arizona. Um, that's actually a flash flood lodge, that car in there. Um, and the third is just descending Mooney Falls, going to Havasupai and hiking, backpacking, climbing trips like that have actually fueled uh, my passion and my efforts uh, to actually improve trails on both coasts. Um, some of my personal community initiatives, um, obviously, first and foremost, has been with a partnership with the National Trail System, overseeing the fundraising uh, for the organization and advocating for our national scenic and historic trails across the country. They both, both our national uh, scenic and our national historic trails um, definitely need a lot of love, a lot of funding, and um, at times and, and pretty consistently improvements across the board. Um, another continuing initiative, um, and certainly uh, throughout my career, has been open space and trails in the state of Nevada. Um, I've overseen the planning and execution of countless trails and parks in Nevada with a focus on those in the Truckee Meadows and the Tahoe Basin. So that's everything from uh, doing trail additions, trail improvements, reroutes, to actually uh, acquiring um, new parks in the Truckee Meadows Basin. Um, the third one is actually uh, the Hidden Valley Trail Improvements, which is actually a great example. And the reason I included it from maybe about four or five years ago was because that was something that was a park, uh, Hidden Valley Regional Park in Washoe County in Nevada in, in the uh, Truckee Meadows Basin that I was planning a dog friendly trail race for to raise money for um, the Truckee Meadows Parks Foundation at the time. And uh, I'll give a quick story on this uh, because it ties in um, there. I labeled this race as a world-class uh, trail running uh, course. And all of a sudden a flash flood um, came in and wiped out the course and, and wiped out a trail that I would wake up and run with my dog every single day. And so very quickly, I had to engage in the community, partner with stakeholders, um, recruit volunteers with just six weeks before this race to actually fix um, some grade issues, drainage issues, uh, trail erosion, um, everything. But by working in the community and advocating with folks and, and partnering with uh, stakeholders that maybe had resources that I didn't have at the time, even in those six weeks, we were able to uh, get 60 people up there, get funding by REI and actually revamp that entire trail. Um, to this day, it's still a flash flood risk due to topography and just where the trail is located, as well as the volcanic nature of the soil. But um, certainly that's an example of how you can, um, as a hiker, how you can potentially engage in an issue on a trail that you see in your community. Um, so fundraising for trail development. I joined the partnership in 2023 and have been working to raise uh, funds for maintaining and expanding trails across the country. By building partnerships with individual and corporate donors, um, I've been able to effectively raise money for new trails and improvement of trail accessibility. Um, so if you want to help fundraising, um, I definitely have uh, some kind of guidelines that you can do, whether you're working for a nonprofit, whether you're on the board, or whether you're um, a hiker and you're just passionate about uh, the outdoors and the open space like I am, and you want to uh, kind of carve yourself a role in the community and, and contribute and give back. 
Um, so first of all, setting clear goals, defining specific objectives for your fundraising efforts to determine how much you aim to raise and what it will be used for, whether that's trail maintenance, new trail construction, new signage, um, or new amenities like trailhead bathrooms or um, uh, additional parking because there's too little parking on a trailhead. Um, to tell your story, as Tyler kind of alluded to earlier on the advocacy side, crafting a compelling narrative about the importance of trails in your community, sharing your personal anecdotes, and highlighting the benefits of trails and explaining how donations will make a difference. Telling your story is so important because whether it's advocacy or whether it's fundraising that leads to um, advocacy and, and improvements down the line, if you don't have a strong story, you don't have supportive, supporting um, documents and statistics and a plan, it's really difficult to fundraise. Um, creating fundraising events. And this is something that um, I think anyone can really do if they care enough um, and, and are interested in, in, in doing that. It's not for everyone, but if they're interested in doing that, um, organizing events that engage the hiking community, such as group hikes, trail cleanups, or trail running races. Um, these events are easy ways to uh, raise funds and awareness for your cause. It's even easier if you partner with a nonprofit organization, um, like a land trust in your community, um, a parks foundation or a trail association, um, because then some of the heavy lifting and the resources that you might need to get those events together are kind of off your shoulder, off your plate slightly. Um, and it's a great way um, to kind of fuel your passion with a cause for improving our trails and, and conserving our open spaces. Utilizing social media, leveraging social media platforms to spread the word about your fundraising campaign. Um, visibility is key. Um, if you don't have visibility, it's again, really difficult to raise funds. So sharing photos, videos, stories to engage potential donors and the community to support the initiatives is super important. Um, and it's a great way to encourage them to contribute as well. Um, collaborating and partnering, um, another really important aspect, seeking partnerships with local businesses like REI or local sporting goods stores, or even restaurants in case you need to cater for an event that you're doing. Um, hiking clubs or environmental organizations as well. Again, back to that creating relationships. Um, it's extremely key and helpful in your process if you're looking to take something like this on. And collaborating with like-minded groups can amplify your fundraising efforts and reach a broader um, audience. I know when I was doing that Hidden Valley uh, Regional Park uh, Trail Improvement Project, I didn't have uh, enough trail guides and I partnered with Great Basin Institute um, in uh, Reno, Nevada to actually bring in a couple more uh, tra trail leads who could actually help supervise uh, the volunteers and um, uh, and putting in French drains and, and rerouting some of the trail. Um, expressing gratitude. Um, I threw this in there because whether it is advocacy or whether it's fundraising, just showing appreciation to donors, volunteers, supporters, stakeholders, elected officials. Thank you, thank you, shout outs on social media and appreciation events if you have the capacity to do that can go a long way in fostering and continuing relationships. So the next time something happens on the trail in your community, it's a little bit easier um, to a little bit of an easier road to actually um, improve those trails. Um, following up and maintaining engagement. Um, again, maintaining that communication, with, whether it's with donors, volunteers who have helped you on your project or stakeholders um, and nonprofits you partnered with. Um, just keeping them engaged with updates on trail development, future plans and ongoing opportunities uh, to support the cause. It's extremely key in doing that. So, um, yeah, those are definitely some ways to help um, from a fundraising perspective. Um, as Tyler and both Courtney talked about, um, the American Hiking Society and the Partnership for the National Trail System does Hike the Hill, um, and this year we'll be uh, doing both virtual and in-person. The virtual briefing is January 22nd to 25th, and the in-person um, is February 11th to 15th, um, and it's advocating for trails and public lands um, in Washington, D.C., um, if you're interested in the in-person, and I know it's coming up quickly, but if you're interested in planning to come out to uh, Washington, D.C. and join us, um, this is what some of the schedule looks like. The first day is um, Sunday, February 11th with a welcome session and agency trail leads meeting. Um, as well, And then from a, February 11th to the 15th, it's group meetings with federal land management agencies and congressional committees. So a great opportunity to connect, um, talk about uh, improvements that you want to see on your trails in your uh, community and with your so and that are important to your association or nonprofit if you do work for a nonprofit or a trail association. And on Monday, February 12th, 2024, um, the trail celebration event will um, be kind of rounding up um, the, the week or not rounding up, but right in the middle to give everyone some um, 
celebration and camaraderie around the event. Um, some of the issues that we'll be addressing are trails funding. So you'll be able to hear experts discuss pending legislation for funding trails, recreation, conservation and maintenance, public lands management. So discussing key issues and, um, and policies related to managing our parks, forests, refuges, and other public lands, as well as uh, equitable access. So addressing barriers and solutions to increase access to trails and public lands for all. Congressional meetings. Um, this is a great guideline and tool to um, be prepared and be ready and be able to take advantage of some of these meetings with um, elected officials. It honestly, this doesn't just work for congressional leaders. Um, it can work for uh, state legislators. It can work for um, your county commissioners, for city council members. If uh, that's something, um, if there's a city park that you need to speak to them about scheduling meetings, um, it always starts there. So as Tyler talked about um, scheduling with uh, connecting with a elected official scheduler um, to advocate for trails and public lands funding and policies. Um, prepare a leave behind packet. I can't stress this enough. I almost always prepare a leave behind packet with talking points, fact sheets, um, potentially testimonials of other people in the community, organizations, um, anyone you can talk to who can kind of craft a better picture of uh, why trail improvements um, or issues affecting trails are so important and um, to kind of get that supporting material to um, support your ask and really inform the office. A lot of these offices are, are working overtime on, on addressing issues. And so having that supplemental material is so key and it makes, um, it, it just improves the ability for uh, lawmakers to actually help on these issues. Practicing your ask is another um, thing I highly recommend. Um, I do it all the time, whether it's with fundraising or whether it's with uh, before meeting with elected officials. So practicing a two to three minute overview of your ask, what you want them to do and why it's important. Um, they look for that um, before they say yes or no. So it's a key aspect of this. Um, and requesting support, request the member support trails and public lands by sponsoring or co-sponsoring legislation. You definitely want to know which legislation um, you are asking them to uh, sponsor or co-sponsor before you go in. Um, supporting funding um, and also actually uh, signing petitions or uh, letters of support for certain initiatives because then you can actually work um, as an organization or as an individual to actually hold uh, lawmakers accountable later on. Um, and offer yourself as a resource. Um, so offer yourself as an ongoing resource um, and source of information on trails and public lands. Um, like I mentioned, congressional offices and, and lawmakers are often um, extremely like rushed and busy. And so uh, when you're offering yourself as a resource, it's almost um, kind of a positive to them that uh, you're going to be able to uh, be a source of um, information and some of the issues that might be coming up in their districts or um, communities. Um, if you can't get to D.C., you can do all these steps in your uh, local congressional offices. Talking points to remember, trails are good for everyone. Trails connect communities. Trails get people outdoors. Trails make for a healthier community. Trails are a way to connect youth to their environment. And being outside is good for your mental health. There's so many other reasons, whether it's economic, um, transit, um, and from a community perspective. Um, so you can definitely utilize these in your local congressional offices and also in your local um, elected officials offices as well. Um, virtual participation for Hike the Hill. So if you can't make it to DC uh, for Hike the Hill this year, um, not a problem. You can still participate virtually by registering for the virtual option. Um, this gets you access to the issue briefings and trainings to help you effectively connect with your representatives back home. Um, the link uh, to register will be posted in the chat, um, but it's also right there and it's on AmericanHiking.org slash advocacy slash hike dash the dash hill. What the virtual um, briefings will look like, they're held on January 22nd and 25th, um, and it'll take place before the in, uh, the in-person Hill meetings. Um, we're doing these to provide trail policy information. Experts will brief on key trail policies and funding um, on a variety of issues. Um, and we're going to be offering advocacy training. So sessions will train advocates on effective meetings as well. Um, virtual issue briefings will prepare everyone before um, meeting legislators on Capitol Hill, before um, you choose to at home, it's helpful as well. Um, and it also educate and brief participants who can't make the trip to DC. Um, another aspect, um, especially when it pertains to our uh, national trail system is if you are looking to get involved and help and advocate, uh, advocate for, um, um, our trails and you potentially live in a gateway community, a town or city on, um, one of the, uh, longer, uh, trails, um, like the Florida, uh, trail here, um, Local does matter. Long trails can't exist without healthy local communities. Um, 
local zoning is a big issue and there is money locally, whether that's through bonds, state recreation trail funds, local community foundation grants, or just good old fashioned fundraising as well. Um, local advocacy for signage, safe camping areas, amenities for through hikers and ordinances that impact hikers like lighting, bathrooms, um, just safety. Um, those are things that you can definitely push for. And we've seen uh, from this example from the Florida Trail that have been extremely successful in their uh, movement to um, improving their trail, which is gorgeous. We just actually saw it when we went down to, uh, uh, we do a workshop in Orlando, uh, not Orlando every year, but we did it last year in Orlando. And it's our the partnership of the National Trail hosts a annual um, uh, workshop where a lot of folks from the trail community get together to learn um, about policy issues, fundraising, um, everything that you can think of regarding trails. Um, and um, go back to that slide, Crystal. I just wanted to yes. mention, so I talked about Great Springs Project earlier, which is the effort to build a 100-mile trail. Um, so some of you guys uh, may be in that position where you don't have a national trail yet in your area, but there are uh, plans for one. Uh, there are plans for regional trails things like that. Uh, and so um, there are ways to get things done locally that can help build a trail. There are also ways, if you have a national or scenic trail that is nearby, that you can create a better experience for people on the trail by making your local community better. So for example, with Great Springs, uh, you know, I served on the city of New Braunfels Bond Advisory Committee and through the bond advisory committee, we were able to get uh, 10 uh, sidewalks added to the city's bond program that will have separated hike and bike uh, opportunities that will take people through the middle of the city uh, where they can't really do that in a, in a safe manner now, right? So that was just a little piece of the puzzle, but by being a local citizen and serving on the bond committee, I was able to work with others who were interested in trails in our community to get that put on the local measure. And then that's a piece of the puzzle, right? All of this supporting trails is a gigantic puzzle that we are all collectively working to put together across the nation. And so if you can just fit one piece into the puzzle, that will make a big difference and a big impact down the road. So don't think that if I can't get to Washington, or I'm nervous about talking to my congressman that you can't make a difference. You can serve on your city's parks and rec advisory committee. You can serve on your county's parks and open space advisory committee. You can serve on, on bond committees. You can work with uh, your local uh, trails advocacy group to apply for state uh, recreational trail grant funding, which can do things like convert abandoned rail lines to trails. Uh, and things like that. So there's so much that you can do just in your community to make a difference. So, you know, some people like me are really mouthy and love to talk. And so I don't mind going to Washington and, and, and advocating and talking, and I don't get nervous about that, but some people do, that's just not their jam, but you can still do things in your community that make a difference to the hiking community, to the National Scenic and Historic Trails. Uh, and so don't forget that that's a, a piece of the puzzle and every piece of the puzzle counts and matters. So I um, hope some of you will be interested in those, those virtual briefings. Um, and maybe you live near DC and you're involved in a trail that's organization that's gonna show up. So lots of great ideas for how to get involved you don't have to show up in someone's office. There's lots of other ways to, to make your voice heard. So I'm so grateful. Thank you all of uh, Tyler, Courtney, and Cristobal for being here today. Um, so with that, we will continue on. And there will be a chance if you get in a breakout room with one of those three, you can pick their brains in, in detail. Um, so that'll be in just a few minutes. So we're gonna transition into giveaways. So today I want to um, share a new product that I discovered this year with, at one of my local independent outdoor stores in Bend. Shout out to Mountain Supply. Um, so I met the owner and founder of Tater Boost, Abdullah. He was handing out samples of this new cold soak food called Tater Boost. And I took some of the savory trail mash on uh, several hiking trips this year 
and was hooked. So tater boost comes in two flavors. There's beet and rosemary and turmeric and garlic. So I assure you both are delicious. Um, and so I asked Abdullah how he approaches his work with intention. And this is what he shared. My vision for starting the company is to offer comforting, delicious, and a sustaining snack that enhances the individual experience in the great outdoors. As a small business owner, it's crucial for me to provide snacks made with whole food ingredients and to build a company that fosters well-being. So before I get into the giveaways, I wanted to let you know that he wants to offer you all a 15% discount code on any orders you place for Tater Boost in the next few weeks. So each order will come with a sticker as well. Um, so that discount code will be in the chat if that's something you are curious to, to, to try. So for the first giveaway, let's keep the topic focused on food. So this will be a subjective question. So there's no right or wrong answers. I'll just pick one that I like to win. Um, what is a crazy or wild combination of trail foods that you've tried and now love? So I'll give you a minute to think and type. Um, and the person who wins will win a pouch of each flavor of Tater Boost. Um, while you're thinking and typing, my weird combination is something I started calling the Shito mix. So that's a combination of my trail name, Shira, and my, one of my go to favorite snacks, Cheetos. So I really just mix whatever salty and sweet things I have with me at the time with Cheetos. And the results are usually pretty good. So one funky combo I remember was included cashews, Cheetos, M&Ms, dried cranberries, and honey mustard pretzel bits. And it turned out to be super yummy. So um, let's see, I hear the ramen bomb, yes. Oh, with, uh, let's see, noodles, peanut butter. That's new, cashews, jerky, Fritos, onions. <laughs> Mary said baby shit, which is peanut butter with dried milk in a tube. <laughs> Patty says, PB and Gore wrapped in a tortilla. Yes, that's a lovely one. Um, Scott, vanilla wafers, candy ginger, dried bananas, plantains. That sounds like a yummy mix. Um, oh, Bonnie likes spicy Fritos on everything. Yum. Um, great. Any, any last uh, things you want to share? Otherwise, I will go ahead and pick a winner. Um, just because I've never actually seen this on trail, I'm going to go with Mike, just Mike, the noodles, peanut butter, jerky, cashews, Fritos, and Frunions. That is quite a combination. So Mike, we're going to send you a pouch of both, the, both flavors of the Tater Boost for your creative combination. So we're going to give away another set. So the first person to type the right answer into the chat will win. So this is a bit of trivia. Turmeric is known for what quality, which could be quite useful on trail. So type your answer. What is turmeric known for? And it would be really helpful to have this while you're hiking. So I see circulation, blood clotting. Nope. Oh, Suzanne got it. Anti-inflammatory. Yes, it's an anti-inflammatory. So if you don't want to tax your system with another round of ibuprofen, um, you will get uh, some benefit from having turmeric in any of your trail foods. So Suzanne, congratulations. We will be um, sending you some tater boosts as well. So if you or someone you know might be interested in sponsoring a giveaway at a future event, we'd love to feature a product um, here. So please email me for more information.